This video is finding the hypothesis test for a population mean where sigma is unknown using the p-value approach. Alright, so if sigma is unknown, then that rules out the z process. So we're going to be doing the t procedure, this time the p-value approach. It's just like the t-value approach, or the critical value approach, except, of course, uh, steps 4 or 5. And of course, six if we reject. All right, so the scenario goes that the LDL cholesterol level above 130 is considered bad for females. Well, so that will be our mu. Nurse decided to check this. She thinks it's higher than 130. So she sampled 35 people and found that their average LDL was 147 with a standard deviation of 31.9. Notice the sentence is with the standard deviation, so we're talking about the sample of 35. We want to test at the 1% significance level whether the nurse is correct, that it's actually greater than 130. First step, null and alternative. In this case, mu equals 130. Alternative is mu is greater than 130. So it's whatever we're testing. We think it's larger than 130. Second step is alpha. Remember our significance level. Third step, since we don't know sigma, we're doing the t-test. That means we need the t-score. All right, it's x bar, 147, minus mu of x bar, 130, divided by s of x bar, which, remember, is 31.9, divided by the square root of 35. So if you're going to plug this all in your calculator, be sure you put this in parentheses, divided by all of this in parentheses, otherwise it's not going to give you the correct answer. All right, to four decimal places, that would be 3.1528. All right, we're going to do the p-value approach. Now, unlike the z-table, we can't find the exact p-value, but we can kind of estimate what it is. First, we have to find our degrees of freedom. Remember, that's n minus 1, which is 34. Now, if we look at our t-table, what we're trying to find is 3.1528 with degrees of freedom of 34. Now, if we look at our t-table, just looking down that row of numbers on degrees of freedom 34, and you're not going to see this because this is a large number. But if you look up at your area, we can see that the area is decreasing as the t-scores increase. So all we know is that our p-value is less than the smallest one we have, which is 0 0.01. So we know that for certain. Now, if you have a calculator that actually finds p-value, <clears throat> you'll see that the p-value is actually 0 0.0017. Now, that's if you have a calculator that calculates the p-value. All right, so we have our p-value. So now we just have to find out if we're going to reject or fail to reject. Remember that we reject when p is less than or equal to alpha. Well, remember alpha is 0 0.01, and we just said that p is less than 0 0.01. Because it is, we reject. And of course, if you have the exact value, that is less than 0 0.01 as well. But you don't have to have the exact value you know that it's just less than, then you're good. We reject. If we reject using the p-value approach, that means we have three sentences. The first sentence says that it's different. Second sentence says if it's less than or greater than. Third sentence, since we're using the p-value, is the evidence against the null. At the 1% significance level, the data do provide sufficient evidence to conclude that the mean LDL of all females differs from 130. There's our first sentence. The second sentence says if it's less than or greater than. We are 
99%, remember those have to equal 100%, confident that the mean LDL of all females is, and in this case it's greater than, if we look at our t-value, step 3, remember it was 3.14, if it's positive, it's greater than. 3 is much larger than the average. What is it? 130. So here's our first sentence. It's different. Second sentence is greater than. Third sentence is the evidence. The evidence against the mean being 130 is very strong. And we know it's very strong because our p-value is less than 0 0.01. So on our p-value evidence chart that we looked at, we can see that it's very strong. This concludes the one mean population hypothesis test using the t-value critical um, p-value approach.